What's up guys? It's Missy. I am back with another SimCity build a video. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about bulldozing and rebuilding. Some of you guys may have heard about it as a way to uh, earn a lot of coins and that is true. However, you need to know kind of what you're getting yourself into here. So for those of you guys who are not subscribed to the channel make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button i put videos out pretty much every day on the game and uh yeah want to make sure you're subscribed so that you get notified now rebuilding method what is it is it beneficial Sh you know should you do it and if you do it what's going to happen okay so the rebuilding method is a method that uh, beginner players use as a way to uh, boost up their coins. Now, it honestly was a really ingenious idea, although it has a major downfall. And you don't know of that downfall until you're too late. So the idea is, is that when you first start the game, you have um, very little requirements for your upgrades, for your house upgrades. So when you put down a construction zone on, let's say an Omega home, as you can see here, these are the items that you get, or not items, this is what you get when you do an upgrade. You're gonna get 70 more people, uh, 1,135 coins, 47 experience, which I maxed out, so I don't get any of that. And then the 20 pink plum bob points because we have a side pass. So if I do the upgrade, that's what I get. Now, with the Omega ones, it's just one Omega item, which costs, what, at least 7,000 coins to make one canister. So at a minimum, 7,000 uh, coins went into that. Okay, so that wouldn't be beneficial, right? But as a new player who puts down a, let's say, construction zone for regular residentials, what they do is at the beginning of the game, it might ask you for, what, two nails to do a house upgrade, a couple metal, some plastic, you know, pretty cheap stuff. So you do your upgrade with cheap items. And then what happens is you get paid the amount that is listed here. And for a lot of you guys, that's like 1300, 1400. So you're giving up like one metal, one plastic, one nail, which is, you know, let's face it, it's like 200 coins roughly, if that. And you're getting, you know, 1200 in return. So what people were finding out is they were upgrading rapidly right and they were getting paid they were getting all these coins and so they're like oh this is a pretty good idea but then they started to get overpopulated and they're like oh this is not such a good idea because now i'm overpopulated my roads are needing upgraded my um, services are needing upgraded my police health and fires needing upgraded you know so all of these things is turning around to cost you so people said well how can we avoid that and still reap the benefits of the coins and that is the rebuilding method you do one or two upgrades on the house keeping it very very cheap and then you just bulldoze it and now you don't have to worry about the population going up you don't have to worry about you know needing those extra services the coverage none of that you basically hand it over you know 200 bucks and stuff and you got 1200 in return you bulldoze it all as well right sounds like a pretty sweet deal well not so much because what they don't tell you is how much you are screwing your game because you're leveling too quickly and you're not paying attention to all of the necessary requirements in the game. So how can you get coin without having to put up a ridiculous amount of experience, rapidly gain levels, and then go 
to this point where you're level 30 something you've got nothing unlocked you have nothing built because you've been bulldozing everything and you had some coins to do what with what are you doing with the coins getting items to do I mean you're not benefiting yourself here is the point so in all reality it's a horrible idea now I did the rebuilding method when I first started playing <laughs> and um, let me tell you it, it didn't take long to figure out that I totally screwed myself it was right about I want to say when I hit about level 35 or so is when the game starts really asking for the more expensive items for upgrades and you notice that you have to keep refreshing your list um, more often because it's no longer a benefit anymore that's the other thing they don't tell you with the rebuilding method is that at some point it no longer becomes beneficial to do upgrades it now costs you to do them so now when it's costing you to do your upgrades is when you start building everything in your city that's terrible if you do the rebuilding method basically what's gonna happen to your game is this you're gonna start off you're gonna have coins and you're going to rapidly level up and then at some point you're going to be a really high level with nothing accomplished and you're going to be sitting there unable to find rares unable to win the contest having way too much stuff unlocked for where you're at with the game and it's just all around a bad idea there are other ways that you can get money to where you don't have to screw up your game now that's kind of the whole idea with you know my channel in general is promoting the uh, productive way to play right so this is when we take a step back and we say okay how can we not have to continually pay for services not have to uh, you know bulldoze our buildings and not be broke well first off you need to get rid of them damn road upgrades okay because you can't be doing nothing if you're gonna be paying crazy amounts for roads watch my never upgrade roads again video it is a lifesaver let me tell you it allows you to keep your happiness at 100% and not have to upgrade your roads be sure to check that out that's gonna save you guys a ton of money once you've done that now you're gonna build only regular residential homes this is going to allow you to convert them into epic projects once you reach level 24 you're not gonna bulldoze any of the homes you're only gonna build regular residential homes because they can be converted they will provide you a speed token once you convert them which means they're constantly giving back to your city which is hey a benefit here because before you know you you weren't doing too hot it was basically costing you even though population allows your taxes to go up they don't go up enough for it to be beneficial because of the fact that the taxes are so minuscule compared to the cost for the people it just doesn't equal out basically uh, don't boost your population for the sole purpose of taxes that's crazy crazy foolish okay don't do that um, the next thing that you want to focus on is making sure that you're not doing crazy ridiculous house upgrades just because Okay, so if you see something in your house upgrade list that is just like ridiculously expensive there's no need to pay all that just click you know refresh on the the items and see if you can get it for cheaper because man I'm telling you guys some of them freaking upgrades are expensive okay so now that you've you know figured all that out now that you're not rapidly leveling you know you're able to kind of take a step back and say okay how can I get money and not have to pay for these extra services well you're not going to have any extra service requirements because you're not going to be going up in population you're not going to be paying for road upgrades now which is good 
And now you can focus on how to get coin. Well, here's the thing. If you're not doing house upgrades, you're not needing as many items, right? So you're not spending as much. That's helpful. Cut all spending. Get your production plan in order. Make sure that you're producing the right items. Selling for max. Make sure that you are buying anything that is for, you know, a deal and reposting it for max. Also checking these sim bubbles that pop up around your city with the coins. These can be marked up as high as 30% sometimes. That is definitely helpful. And then you don't have to, you know, worry about the services being exceeded because you're not leveling up. You know, you're camping. So a lot of you guys on the Missy's Building Guide, you camp for quite a while. Camp level 24 until basically everything is completed. This allows you to complete everything much, much easier, achieve uh, everything that you need to achieve, stack up all kinds of, you know, currency with the, uh, the fact that, you know, you are now considered to be an experienced player playing against inexperienced players who are at the bottom because they leveled too quickly. So the whole idea here is that you are, uh, you level at your speed leveling up to 24. Okay. And then you're stopping and you're camping. You're getting your roads set up properly because you're camping, you're not seeing that constant increase in population, so you're not having to constantly whittle away. You know, every time you take 10 steps forward, you're taking 20 steps back. You know, you don't want to do that. Then you're just constantly in the same, basically in the same spot you were in from the beginning. So now that you've gotten all that taken care of, you can say, okay, services, right? The regular residential homes they have a very low service demand versus all the other residentials have medium or high actually i think the old town is low as well but point being that the service demand is very low for that style home so that is another added benefit to your building the regular residentials now a lot of people always you know take screenshots of homes and say you know what is this home and how do i get it for those of you guys who ask those questions, basically, if you see a house that you like the look of and you're not sure where it came from, if it's on um, somebody else's game that you, you know, actually speak to, like maybe if it's somebody in your club, you can ask them where they got it. But for the most part, they're usually uh, epic projects, the ones that you may have trouble identifying. So what happens is when you do a epic project on a regular residential home so these are regular residentials once I pay and I do the epic project depending on which category I've chosen will depend on how that home transforms now it has a random uh, style per category and there's you know like 10 or 12 different types of epics that you can get if you really like the look of these particular homes here these are mountain epics so when you want to get one of these you won't be able to pick which one you get but when you do a epic project on the mountain category it will transform into something that looks like these these short ones mountain category is the only epic category that is short if you want something like you know this one here the twisty one that one is um, a landmark one and usually you can tell what they are by clicking on them and then you'll see the little uh, icon and you can match it up you can't see mine because um, there's a token on it for example if I was to do this start the token and come over here and collect these like that then I could click this and it would show me right here see it shows me what kind of token I get every 24 hours and it shows me that little tiny symbol there 
and I can match that symbol up to the menu symbols and it shows me which category this particular home belongs to. So this one here shows a little anchor, so that's the beach. That one shows a camera, so that's the landmarks and so forth. Okay. So yeah, that pretty much sums it up. For those of you guys who were asking about the rebuilding method, I do not recommend it. It is absolutely ridiculous. Do not do it. Okay? Just follow the Missy's Building Guide and you will do excellent. Alright you guys, good luck.